Social media has taken a beating over the last year or so, and rightfully so. At the time of recording this in the middle of 2023, there's concerns about how people are getting addicted to their phones, there's China spying on us, there's grandma becoming a conspiracy theorist on Facebook, there's all these new features on apps that we didn't ask for, and then there's tech billionaires who are driving platforms off a cliff. There's a lot of reasons to hate social media right now, and I really do hate social media. But I do think there's a few ways for record labels to leverage social media really easily to our advantage. Super simple things that will help our artists get heard. Let's discuss. Go to otherrecordlabels.com slash benefits where I'm putting the notes from today's episode. You can also check out our podcast on this topic and you can digest the four benefits to using social media for record labels that we're going to talk about today. Why take advice from me? I'm not a social media expert. I'm old-ish or pretty old. I'm not going to say, but old I don't have a lot of success on social media. I don't have a ton of followers. So why would you listen to me? I have a little bit of a drive-by approach when it comes to social media. I log in, just post something and then take off. Well, you see, a lot of you might be like me where you don't really value social media personally or it's hurt you or bothered you in the past. You think it's problematic for whatever reasons, but you're wondering, should I use this to promote my music and my artist music on my record label, whether you're a record label owner or you're an independent musician? Maybe you're like me and you think that you're tweeting into the void or the algorithm is completely ignoring you. Well, despite hating social media and not being an influencer, I actually think that social media can be valuable. I do think you should use social media if you're a record label. I don't care what you do on there. We're not gonna talk about content or the types of content. We've talked about that before in our Social Media for Record Labels course. We've talked about that on other episodes. You can go and find those. Today, we're going to talk about kind of the overall benefits of using social media. I don't really care what type of content you do. I don't care if you create your own things or copy other people's things or just do automated things, whatever. That's not the point. Today, I just want to talk about four reasons why you should use social media, What? ever and regardless of the content you make or what platforms you use or don't use. But first, let me tell you about my brand new friends, Hyped It. They also just happen to be this week's sponsor. Hyped It is an incredible music platform for record labels and for indie artists to help you create pre-save links. I literally just made one for myself a couple days ago. It was super easy. You can do email captures. So basically you can set up this simple page that you share on mobile or on desktop or via email where you trade something in exchange for an email. So maybe you give them access to a private video or a download, and then you get your fans email addresses. There's so many cool tools in here, including a Spotify Facebook ad campaign manager. It's like you don't have to go into Facebook ads to manage a campaign. You don't have to know anything about Facebook ads. You basically all within the hyped it profile, you just choose a song or a playlist or an album or an artist profile on Spotify. Then you pick like three or four artists that you sound like or artists that your playlist sounds like. Then you set your daily budget and then it just uses AI to do the rest. And it like, it's really cool. I'm testing it out right now. I'm going to do a video on it later, but it's really cool. Anyway, check out Hyped It by going to the link in the description or just go to otherrecordlabels.com slash Hyped It. That's spelled H-Y-P-E-D-D-I-T. Regardless of where you stand on social media, whether you're an indie artist, you're on an indie record label, I just want to talk about four benefits of social media that I think might change your perspective on social media if you're like me and you don't like it. Okay, the first benefit is B2B networking, business to business. So if you're a record label, even if you're an independent artist, you're a business, right? So an independent record label is a business and we can use platforms like Twitter or whatever they're calling it now or Instagram to interact with other businesses, namely just other record labels. That would make a good name for a podcast. I've made a ton of friends who are indie artists, who are industry folks, who are writers and journalists, just on Twitter, just by liking the things they post, not like in a non-authentic way. Like I actually just like what they talk about. I like their opinions. I like the music they promote. I've met writers and curators and journalists and musicians and record label owners. I think it's one of the best benefits of social media is just networking with other business owners. I don't really go out there looking for people who I think can help my business. That kind of just happens naturally after the fact. 
Or maybe it hasn't helped me yet. Maybe I've helped them and I don't know it. Or maybe they will help me in some way down the road. I don't know. When people always ask me about how to promote your releases or how to get the attention of writers and bloggers and curators, well, this is probably the best way is to play the long game by just interacting with them and being friends with them on social media. You can also get some pretty cool opportunities. Sometimes people will post a sync licensing opportunity. Uh, sometimes people will post a job opening. Or I've seen labels have to pass on a band a demo submission because their schedule is full and so they pass it off to another label on social media. That's really cool. The second benefit that I see in social media is brand awareness. Let me explain because that's kind of like a, you know, a cliche term. But I think a post or your activity on social media is the digital equivalent of having an open sign for a retail business. You know, when you walk down the street and there's that neon sign that says open? Well, I think that's true too for online businesses or businesses that mostly operate online. When you go to their social media pages and they have a post from today or yesterday, you know they're alive. You know they're doing something. They haven't shut down. If I wanna go to a local business, like a local traditional brick and mortar retail business in my town or a town I'm visiting, if I go to their website, I don't get too many like up-to-date news and maybe Google just gives me the hours, but I don't know if it's very accurate. I'll go to social media because I wanna see if like they posted today because if they posted today, then they're probably open today. And if I go to their social media profile and they haven't posted in like six months or two years, I'm like, this store is probably out of business. Not always the case, but it's not a good sign. So think of you just showing up on Instagram or Twitter or whatever and posting one or two things as your virtual open sign. Social media can also act as an introduction to new fans. And so when I discover a record label, I'll go to Instagram to kind of check out their overall aesthetic. Do they like the same visuals and stuff that I like? I might go to Twitter to find out if the, their values or messaging is in line with the things I value. I might go to YouTube or Facebook to like listen to something easily or to find a link to a Spotify playlist. So there's a lot of brand awareness that happens just by you showing up and posting things. Even if you feel like you're doing it into the void and you look at your metrics and only 10 or 20 people who are noticing these things, that's okay because it might be people who are just like learning about your record label or people will access these posts one day when they need to learn about your record label. Benefit number three is marketing touch points. There was this study by Top Performance in Sales, Prospecting Research, whatever, that it takes an average of eight touch points. So what are a touch point? Well, it could be an article in a newspaper. It could be a friend uh, recommending your business by word of mouth. It could be a billboard. It could be a digital ad or an Instagram post or a tweet or overhearing somebody talking about a business at a party. Those are all touch points. And there's a study that says that potential buyers or customers or new fans in our case need eight of these touch points before they're converted, before they actually say, okay, you know what? I actually need to check this out. This happened to me with an album a couple of years ago. And I remember kind of keeping track. It was funny, but like somebody was talking about this new album by this artist I was familiar with, but I hadn't really checked out their music. And uh, one friend was like, oh my gosh, I love this new record. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I respect their music taste. And then I saw another friend on social media also post about it. And I was like, well, that's weird. And then a couple of people were writing about it. And then I got started, started getting paid ads on Facebook by this, the record label for this album. And by the time, I think maybe finally I heard a song playing in Target on the radio or something. And I was like, okay, I actually have to check out this record. And I literally stopped there and checked out the record, added it to my library. And so we kind of need those touch points. And so for you showing up, even though you might feel like you're yelling into the void, it's actually still really beneficial because you're yelling into the void might be just number five of the eight touch points, or it could be number eight of the touch points. And finally, they check you out. Maybe they just hear your tweet or see your tweet or whatever, or see it a, a, a story on Instagram. And that's just touch point one. And you're kind of discouraged because they didn't click the link. But in a couple days or a couple weeks or even a couple years, they actually finally check out that album that they had been hearing about after that eighth touch point. Does that make sense? Like I mentioned with brand awareness, not only with touch points, but entry points, you need to make sure that you give fans all of these touch points, but entry points into your ecosystem as a record label or if you're an independent artist. So if they're kind of browsing on Twitter and they see the eighth touch point for your new album, you have to make it really frictionless for them to click on your profile and see your newest release right there. Maybe it's a pinned tweet. Maybe it's a pinned post on Instagram. Maybe your most recent posts on Facebook or on YouTube are this new album. You need to make that really frictionless and have a lot of entry points that are similar. 
like an Instagram story with a link to your Spotify playlist or a tweet with a link to the Bandcamp or an email that goes out with multiple links to different platforms. Do you get what I'm saying? Touch points, entry points. And finally, the fourth benefit of using social media as a record label is meeting people where they're at. You and I might hate social media because we're old and boring, but there are other people who like social media. Maybe there are people who aren't addicted to it. They don't find it addicting. They just find it useful. Well, good for them. And we should be able to serve our fans wherever they like to learn about new music. If that's in a magazine or if that's on a Spotify playlist or that's on traditional radio, college radio, then we need to service all of those platforms. That's kind of our job as record labels is to spread the music far and wide across every platform that we can so that we meet music fans where they like to discover music. And for some music fans, that's social media. That could be Instagram. That could be beautiful artwork or beautiful pictures of vinyl records on Instagram or Instagram stories. Or it could be influencers doing something with a song in the background on a TikTok. TikTok? What's, what's a TikTok called? Is it called just a TikTok? Is it called a talk? I don't know. We need to reach grandma on Facebook. Bury your music in between some of the conspiracy theories she's into. It's okay. Social media is just one piece of the bigger pie. And each post on each platform is not going to go viral or make or break your label. If it does, congrats. But really, it's just one piece of the big pie. A tweet here, a little video on YouTube here, a, a funny story or TikTok over here and there, an email blast to your diehard fans, a retweet, an automated retweet that retweets the post automatically for people on the West Coast or in Europe or whatever. Just keep doing these little touch point things. Now, really, all I'm saying is these are the benefits. Now, the way you implement whatever strategy you do, whatever content you make, that's for another day. And that's whatever makes you happy and doesn't stress you out. Don't copy people or copy people. I don't care. My point is these are the benefits. And so really just show up. Remember what I said at the beginning, social media can act as just an open sign for your business. So just show up, let people know you exist. You don't have to be an influencer. You don't have to have things go viral or do the best things or whatever. Just show up, let people know that you're releasing music. Try to be consistent. Pick a day of the week or a time of each day that you want to post. Maybe there's like seven social media platforms and you assign one to each day of the week. Or maybe you do all seven in one day and then you take a break or you have a scheduling app. I don't care. I'm just trying to tell you the benefits of using social media. Listen, I know there's problems with social media. It can impact your mental health. It can impact your creativity or your productivity. Maybe you've got it all figured out when it comes to social media strategies for your record label. That's awesome. Either way, I hope you found this helpful. Go to otherrecordlabels.com slash benefits where I've outlined the notes from today's episode. You can also check out all of the other resources we have for independent record labels, including our free record label toolkit, which is like this zip file that contains like all of the resources that I've created over the past five years for record labels. It's a free download. You can check the link in the description for that. And another huge shout out to my friends at Hyped It for sponsoring today's video. Thank you for supporting other record labels and thank you for supporting the community. Check out Hyped It by going to otherrecordlabels.com slash Hyped It. Thanks for watching.